morning, everyone, and welcome to Port Nelson United Church here in Burlington, Ontario. My name is Michael Brooks, and I'm so glad that you've taken time out of your day to uh, join us in worship. It's Sunday, June the 28th, and I'm here in our sanctuary here at Port Nelson, surrounded by all the wonderful pictures of our church family. This month of June has been a month of celebration. We've been celebrating our affirming ministries, and so we bring that to a close this morning. Uh, we've also been celebrating the wonderful success of the uh, Case for Kids event for Wesley Urban Ministries in Hamilton. And so I'm joined uh, this morning by Wesley the Bear. And uh, Wesley, I am told that we have already surpassed our goal of $5,000. In fact, we're well beyond that. So well done to the church family and to others who supported this uh, great cause for Wesley Center in Hamilton. And you can still contribute right through to the end of July if you wish to do so but we're bringing our sort of um, campaign to a close this month. So thanks to Wesley and to Sharon Holmes for coordinating this on behalf of our church. The other thing that we're celebrating this morning is our children and youth ministries and music ministries. So we're joined by Sharon and Jay and Stillman, and you will hear from each of them in the service as they extend their appreciation for uh, the wonderful year that we have had. As unusual as it ended, there are so much great things that happened uh, this past year with children, youth, and music. So that'll be part of our service today. Lots to celebrate. We would normally be having a barbecue after our service. Not able to do that, but hopefully you can uh, do that as a family to uh, celebrate this great program year. I just wanted to mention a few things looking ahead to the summer, though. We've got a great worship uh, theme and series planned for you. It's called uh, Mark My Word, Quoting the Bible Without Knowing It. There are so many phrases that people use in everyday language that actually come from the Bible, and people don't even know it. Um, and so we're going to explore a number of these over the summer series. And so we hope that you'll join us each Sunday morning at 1030. Uh, we have a variety of great preachers to uh, bring these messages to you this summer. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that if you have some time over the summer to reflect on your experiences over the last few months of being isolated, we'd love to hear about those in the form of stories. We're trying to compile a book that we might use uh, next year on uh, isolation and wilderness. And so if you have two or 300 words or a poem or something around an experience you've had in the last few months, uh, take some time to write that down, send it to the church office, and we'd love to include that in our reflection booklet next year. On the YouTube, uh, just below the YouTube channel, there is a link to the order of service. Uh, I invite you to click on that to have it available in another device or to print it out and that way you can participate in our service this morning. Again, welcome to Port Nelson, and let's take a moment or two now as we center ourselves for worship.
At the various stages along this journey in life, God is with us, wherever, whenever, forever, in birth, in youth, in adulthood, in senior years, we are never alone. In life, in death, in life beyond death, we are never alone. We give thanks for God's unending work of recreation. God is with us yesterday, today, forever. Hello, Port Nelson, and hello, Sharon. Hello, Jay, from Six Feet Apart. It's so great to see it's you. It's wonderful to see you in person, Jay. Can you believe another end to an adventure crew and pinnacle season? And what a season it has been. Wild. Tell us what you have been up to. Well, we have been doing a lot in adventure crew. I must say, I love my job. It is wonderful. But I know I couldn't do my job without the volunteers that I have. The PA days could not go on without Pat Gilmore, Sharon Beasley, Laura Hancock. My Friday family fun nights would be extremely technically challenged without the helps of Alex Hutchinson and my pizza manager, Adrian Beasley. Every other Sunday, up until the last few months, every other Sunday, Laura Hancock's been down at Adventure Crew helping with the crafts, maybe a little crowd control. <laughs> and then when Laura's not available, I know I can always call on Eric and Cindy Powell or Susan Redgrave, Lisa Pope, Jocelyn Farrell, they're all there to help. And that is so important for what I do. Now, Adventure Crew the last few months, we've been on Zoom every week. Amazing. Doing crafts, doing our lesson, having fun. And I have to do a shout out to each and every parent because those kids don't get on Zoom by themselves. <laughs> so thank you for the parents for getting the kids on Zoom and getting the craft materials put together because without that team, these months couldn't have happened for sure. But speaking of Adventure Crew, this is the week that I lose some of my crew to you. So this year, it is Luke Powell and Alice Little. Wow. These two kids are fantastic. So they will be, a, you're gonna just love them. Um, their spirit and their joy and their kindness is just amazing. I mean, this would be the time that on a regular Sunday, this time of year, they would be called forward. I can't do that this year. But I did put a secret plan in place. Ooh. Their parents, have an envelope which they will be presenting to them at this time. So Luke and Alice, I thank you for being such a joy in the class. Uh, Alice actually wouldn't have been in the class. So unfortunately their year travel got put on hold or suspended or they had to come home. So luckily for us though, she got to join in Zoom. So Luke awesome. and Alice, I thank you for all the joy and energy you brought to the Adventure Crew over these years. I will miss your smiling face and the energy and it has been a privilege and a pleasure to be part of your spiritual growth uh, all, this, all these years. And I look forward to watching your journey continue with Jay. Awesome. So Jay, what have you been up to? Well, it has been a busy 12 weeks. Like you, we've kept meeting. Pinnacle has kept meeting virtually every week. And one blessing of this pandemic has been that we've been able to spend more time together. So we have hung out Thursday nights, playing games online, uh, had lots and lots of fun. So Luke and Alice, we can't wait to welcome you to our group. And once a graduate of Adventure Crew, it's one big family. Absolutely. Right? And a, another highlight, a highlight of my year with Pinnac the Pinnacle Group was um, spending the weekend in November in downtown Toronto with the Confirmation Group, really experiencing what living on the streets of Toronto is really like. I will take that with me and uh, want to give a big congratulations to some graduates, not from Pinnacle, but from school. Uh, Annika graduated from grade six, so she's gonna be going to middle school at Central. And then we had a couple grade eight graduates, Lily, Lucy, and McKenna are off to high school and uh, so many wonderful experiences await them. So congratulations, girls. I wanna thank all my wonderful young people uh, for 
letting me join them in their spiritual journey as we learn together, grow together, and have fun together. So have a wonderful summer, everyone, and we look forward to seeing you, hopefully in person, hopefully. in September. But we will be online if not, right, Sharon? Absolutely. You can't get rid of us. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. Good morning, everyone. For those who may be watching from afar and have not met me, my name is Stoneman Matheson, and I am the Director of Music here at Port Nelson United Church. As we come to the end of the program year and look forward to the summer, I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to the many musicians who have contributed so much to our services over the past year. To our choir, which until recently has led our congregational song, to our handbell ringers who have enlivened our services with their enthusiastic participation. To the many vocal and instrumental soloists who have given so generously of their time and talent. To those members of the choir who often perform double duty as accompanists at the piano and the organ. And finally, to Tanya Laurie, who prepares the children for an occasional Sunday morning musical performance. We are very fortunate to have, as part of the Port Nelson family, so many highly skilled musicians who willfully, willingly and cheerfully enhance our services of worship. Thank you to all of you. As part of our service today, we are going to hear our choir sing a beautiful anthem written by a young Canadian composer, Patrick Murray. And I think that the words of the anthem, a poem written by Patricia Orr, are particularly appropriate as we end this season and look forward to the time when we can again make music together. Morning Hymn. First voice of dawn, last carol of the evening sun, through time eternal and what may gloriously be, you carry me, you speak my language, music. How shall we touch the rafters, raise the roof, disturb the sky? How shall we mark the rhythm of our days, in celebration of the language of the heart, you speak my soul. And we shall sing through silence when it falls. We shall go deep. For twilight and the dawning are bridged by the blessed hymns of God.
As we begin our prayer time, I have a couple of updates. Heather Stewart, chair of our Reaching Out Ministries, fell recently and broke her leg. Her recovery is going quite well, and she appreciates our prayers. Diane Segsworth of Lowville United Church is a friend of someone in this congregation. She soon begins the journey of cancer treatment, and we hold Diane in prayer. To pray is to enter into a relationship with God and to have that relationship make a difference in our life. Prayer lessens our desire for control. Prayer changes us. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Great and generous God, on this summer morning, we give thanks for the joy of creation, for the rhythm of the seasons, for the healing beauty of nature, for the constant renewal of life from the earth. This Sunday at the close of the school year, we give special thanks for the children and youth of this congregation, for the ministries of the nursery, adventure crew and pinnacle, for Kelly, Sharon and Jay and their gifts. We are grateful that throughout our lives there are countless opportunities to learn about and experience your wonderful world through our senses, our minds, and our hearts. God of the old and the new, who keeps us traveling along with you, we give thanks for opportunities for recreation, for times of rest and stillness that renew us, for times of play and laughter that refresh us, for all that nourishes and restores our souls. In this time, while we have been isolated, the gifts of art, music, and play have been life-giving, and we are very grateful for them. We give thanks for Stillman and his gifts, for all of the music ministries of this faith community. We look forward to the time when once again, we will be able to participate in them. And thank you, Creator God, for all the guest musicians who have lifted our spirits over the last few months by offering gifts of melody and harmony. God of boundless compassion, we offer you our thanks for love and kindness that brings strength and tenderness for all that touches our deepest core. Hear our prayers for every person who is in need. We remember people throughout the world who are suffering because of war, famine, or natural disasters. We remember those who, because of their age, race, belief, ability, gender or gender identity, family configuration or income level, are abused or oppressed. Encourage us to speak up and stand up for the rights of all people. May we not forget Jesus' message that whenever we welcome another person, we are welcoming the Christ. May your comfort and care be expressed through our loving actions. Strong and tender God, we hold up to you in prayer those known by us those with health concerns, Jacob McKenzie, Karen Baldeo, Heather Stewart, Diane Segsworth, and all who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember Susan Rust and family as they grieve the death of Mark, and Maggie Cordingly and family mourning the death of Bob. Hear also our prayers spoken aloud or in silence for others whom we carry in our hearts. Source of all life and love, thank you that you attend to us and hear all of our longings. Caring God, we are grateful for friends and family who support us through sorrow and share in our joy. We thank you for small acts of kindness that comfort and cheer us, for people everywhere who work for peace and justice, for the inspiration of your spirit, helping everyone to bloom where we are planted. Wondrous God, 
we lift up all of our heartfelt th prayers to you in Jesus' name. And together from wherever we are, we pray the words Jesus gave his followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we bring our celebrations of affirming to a close to today, our first uh, scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. These will be familiar words to many of us. Jesus comes to the end of a lengthy description of the job description for the newly commissioned mission team, the disciples that he has called. I'm reading this morning from Eugene Peterson's paraphrase of the Bible, The Message. And if you wish to follow along, there is a link on the order of service and you can simply click on that link and follow along with these words. Jesus says, we are intimately linked in this harvest work. Anyone who accepts what you do accepts me, the one who sent you. Anyone who accepts what I do accepts my father who sent me. Accepting a messenger of God is as good as being God's messenger. Accepting someone's help is as good as giving someone help. Now this is a large work I've called you into, but don't be overwhelmed by it. It's best to start small. Give a cool cup of water to someone who is thirsty, for instance. The smallest act of giving or receiving makes you a true apprentice. You won't lose out on a thing. We give thanks for these words of God that have inspired minds and gladdened hearts for generations, and to God be the glory. Amen. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and may all the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O God, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. On Thursday, June the 4th of this year, thousands of people walked along New Street here in our city of Burlington to the City Hall in solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. That was back at the beginning of June. Since then, our Port Nelson church family and much of the country has celebrated values of inclusion and affirming. We're nearing the end of June now, and so we bring these observances to a close, even though we recognize that it is a journey and there is still lots of road ahead of us. Well, back on June the 4th, at the beginning of the month, the television cameras came to our city and they were focused on people who were holding large signs and walking reflectively along the road to City Hall and, and taking a knee in solidarity with what happened in May in Minneapolis. But there's a story that wasn't told that day. And it's a story that reflects something of the Christian message and the Christian journey, particularly what we read and heard just a moment ago. So I'd like to share that story with you today. Just a few blocks from here, down near the corner of Rossmore Boulevard and New Street, seven-year-old Cal and his mother had set up a small card table along the walk route. Now, Cal, seven years old, had thought that June the 4th might be a, a fairly warm day. And so he had the idea that he would set up a small table along the route 
with some cups of water that people could pick up on their way by if they were getting hot. And so that's what they did. Everything was going well, and people were thankful for these cups of water as they walked along. Then, as Cal and his mother sat, Cal noticed that there was an elderly woman on the far side of the street, and she was beginning to labor, to walk more slowly. She had a a rather heavy sign in her hand, and it looked like the sign was beginning to come down. And so without giving it much thought, Cal grabbed one of the glasses of water from his table, and he made his way through the crowd to the other side of the street to try to reach this woman. You see, because this woman was four lanes of traffic away, she had not seen the table with the water on the other side of the road. Now, Cal's mother was concerned, and and she tried to hold him back. After all, it was the pandemic, and, and she didn't want him to get too close to other people, but Cal insisted, and he left the table with a glass of water and made his way to the other side of the street. And just as the woman was about to stop and try to find a spot on the curb to take a rest, she saw Cal coming out of the corner of her eye with a glass of water. She turned and she smiled and she grabbed the cup, took a sip of water, and then said thank you and was able to carry on. This month, I've been rereading Dietrich Bonhoeffer's classic book, The Cost of Discipleship. Now, some of you may have heard of Bonhoeffer and and may know something about him. He was a Lutheran pastor, and and he was uh, vocally and publicly opposing the Nazis during World War II. And because he was vocally and publicly in opposition to this, he was thrown in prison. And on April the 9th, 1945, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was brutally executed because he had been linked to a plan to bring down and to kill Hitler. It would just be 21 days after Bonhoeffer was executed that Hitler would commit suicide. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was held for several years in a variety of concentration camps in Germany. I visited the Buchenwald camp when I was there a few years ago where Bonhoeffer was held for a time. And when Bonhoeffer was a prisoner, uh, he was known to have actually befriended guards uh, such that the guards would help him smuggle some of his poetry and his writing out of the prisons. And that's why we have uh, Bonhoeffer's letters from prison and other writings. Bonhoeffer has been described as one of the 20th century's great martyrs. He could have had a life of privilege. At just 24 years of age, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was teaching theology at Berlin University. But instead, the last few years of his life, were spent in the concentration camps, and he met a brutal end. Now, in the book that he wrote, The Cost of Discipleship, he says that when Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. When Christ calls a man, he bids him come and die. As we know, for Bonhoeffer, that meant a literal, brutal, physical death. But of course, if we think about that for a bit, we realize that there are a variety of ways of dying to something, that we can live to a situation for a time, and then the time comes when we must let go, and we need to die to shed what we have been doing. But for Bonhoeffer, in the cost of discipleship, every response or every response to the call of Christ is an act of living and then of dying, living up to the call, but some part of us needs to die to let something go in order to respond to that call. Bonhoeffer, as we know, 
paid a high price for discipleship, for following Christ. And there have been others that we think about, Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, Nelson Mandela. These people will be forever remembered for the dramatic and significant things that they have done in the name of standing up for justice. But that's not to say that the smaller things that so many others do are any less significant. And I think that Bonhoeffer's life and works confirm what Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 10. Now, we read the very end of Matthew 10 just a few moments ago, but the whole chapter outlines a number of ways that these first disciples that Jesus has called, a number of ways that they can do that, a number of concrete things that they can do. It's really a job description for Jesus' newly named team. And they are big things, curing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, casting out demons, even betraying siblings in the name of Christ, going to great lengths, big costs of discipleship. But then we come to the end of the chapter, the few verses that I read. And you know what? I think we are surprised. We are surprised by what we read. We might expect that the news crews will show up to report on something big, perhaps the stilling of the storm or the feeding of the 5,000. But no, it's a small cup of water, Jesus says, that can make all the difference. Whoever gives Uh, even a small cup of water to just one person in need has enacted discipleship. Cal may not have known that he was enacting discipleship when he ran across the street with that cup of water for that woman. But that's what Jesus names it as. Friends, you may not be the one to organize a Black Lives Matter rally You may not be one who would carry the largest banner in the Pride Parade. You may not have stood in the Supreme Court of Canada to fight for the rights of Indigenous peoples. You may not have spent the last three years in prison, executed at the hands of the political powers of the day in the name of justice. You may not have been crucified. But even one small cup of water still holds the freshness and the newness of God's grace. Big things, small things. It's all discipleship, friends, and there's always a cost. There's always a living and a dying. But today we remember that it all contributes to steps forward towards a more welcoming, inclusive, and affirming church, community, and world. The month of June is almost gone, but the journey continues. May God bless it. Amen. This is the Sunday when the rhythm of the church uh, changes a bit. We look ahead to July and August when there is less going on. But nonetheless, friends, you have been so very generous with your gifts, particularly in the last three months. We have been highlighting every week the strong support for food access in our community, for Wesley Center, for Seeds of Life, the food bank, Uh, the food voucher program, so many things, and thank you for that. This is the time in our service when you are invited to reflect on the blessings of life, and you are invited, if you are able to, uh, to visit portnelsonunitedchurch.com, which is our website, and on the homepage, you will find information for online giving. 
I invite you, if you're able, to visit that and to respond with your gifts for the ministry of this church or for the variety of outreach needs that are listed uh, in that online information. So as we're blessed by the music, let's take a moment now to reflect on the blessings of life as we present and give our offerings.
Let us go out into the summertime world. We go knowing that like a rock, God is under our feet. Like the starry night sky, God is over our head. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before. And like a river runs to ocean, our home is in God evermore. And we go wherever the summer may find us. We go with this blessed assurance that the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit abide with us this day and forevermore. Amen.
Thank you.